perspective and dealing with these topics uh, today. So let's spend, let's spend four or five minutes quite quickly discuss, explain to your friend what is geocoding, what is reverse geocoding, what is a geocoder, and then what is a spatial index and what do we use it for in related to GIS analysis. Uh, geocoding, so indeed it's a process of transforming addresses or place names to coordinates in some specific coordinate reference system. At least in this context, of course, we get geocoding that can could mean multiple things, but in the kind of GIS process context, that is exactly what it is. So we have an address and we want to get the location co coordinates on Earth. So it could be a name of a place like Fisikum in Kumpula or then the address Gustav Hellström in Katu 2 uh, and so forth. Mm. And then quite logically, uh, reverse geocoding is the opposite. So transforming coordinates to addresses or maybe more specifically finding the closest address to that point. So then of course it might be an estimation uh, estimation of that. So finding near, nearby place names uh, through computational methods. And of course there you will need then some kind of a database maybe. Maybe is there something funny? Um, yeah. So coordinates to addresses was the correct solution there. Then uh, geocoder, we can all be geocoders if we want, but indeed geocoders are then softwares or services that do this transformation. So we use some geocoding services, which are these geocoders. Today we will be using Nominatim, which is related to OpenStreetMap. Um, so, Maybe here application for geocoding is, is quite quite correct. We'd say God. <laughs> okay, yes. So tool tool to tool to perform magic. That's that's actually quite a good good definition. So there are multiple geocoders or geocoding services from Google, here maps, uh, even this what is it? What three words? Um, I'll show a list soon. And then, of course, the quality of our geocoding or reverse geocoding depends on the service and then the underlying data. I don't know, in the basic GIS courses, you might have used some ArcGIS, true ArcGIS, some Finnish geocoding service, perhaps. I don't know if that exercise still exists. But maybe even on a daily basis, if you search for an address from Google Maps or OpenStreetMap or the trip planner, that's a kind of geocoding process. Uh, that goes, goes there. Uh, then spatial index. I bet not most of you didn't get so far. Okay, doping for geocoding, what does that mean? <laughs> anyway, but space, well, we know what are indices. So spatial indices, uh, it's a way to label uh, geographic data to speed up spatial joints. We'll discuss this probably after the break, but for example, we could index that, is it, in the north or in the south, and then more specifically using kind of a, a tree model for indexing. So spatial indices speed up spatial overlay analysis. And we'll, we'll check out a tutorial that Henrikki has kindly created over the weekend at some point of this lesson. Okay, so lesson uh, three yes, processes. So we will cover geocoding. Uh, in using GeoPandas and the Nominatim geocoder. So that's, well, it's quite a quick example. It can, of course, get more complicated if we have more data, but it's quite a fun task. And you'll also use that in the exercise. Mm, then we'll move on to kind of geometric operations. We'll be starting to do these very classic GIS tasks, overlay analysis, so point in polygon queries, uh, and then then indeed check how we could boost our spatial queries using the spatial index in GeoPandas. Then we'll do some spatial joins, so based on spatial, spatial location join uh, information between layer, layers. And then finally, we'll do some nearest neighbor analysis. So if 
for example, I'm thinking which is the closest metro station out of all these metro stations. So then here using Euclidean distance, so the shortest path uh, distance, we can get the solution. Then later on in week six, I think we'll discuss network distances, which is of course then a bit more complicated analysis. Um, there we go. So let's start. I'll explain a bit more about geocoding before we get hands on um, in there. So we'll be using a Python module called Geo GeoPy through GeoPandas. So that's not the only option, but it's a, a very good option at the moment. And then GeoPy further uses several or enables us to use several different geocoders. Uh, for example, Nominatim, but then there's a list of, list of many other geocoders. And if you check the GeoPy documentation, um, that looks like this. You can get detailed, detailed information about how to use these different services. So Nominatim is the one that we will be using here. And there's then specific parameters related to this geocoder. Uh, we could pick. We have some older course materials where we use Google uh, Geocoder, but there you need an API key. So you need to actually register to this service. And then you can make some, some requests for free, but then if you want to make an application, use it professionally, then you need to, I don't know what are the paid plans prices, but then of course you need to sometimes pay for these services because it's quite a heavy, uh, heavy, heavy traffic than if you uh, geocode. Uh, constantly something. And then there was here maps, as I said, so it depends uh, a bit. So let's say, well, I haven't checked that out, but you could guess that if you are doing something, some application in the area of France, you might want to check for some local, local provider, often at least in Helsinki, uh, the OpenStreetMap related nominative is, is rather good. We could even check a bit ad hoc. Mm. So if I'm here searching for something, let's zoom out and could search for, well, let's search for Kai Satalo. I have, haven't actually checked this. Helsinki Yliopiston pääkirjasto, so the main library of Helsinki. Uh, Nominatim is able to find Kai Satalo only based on the name. But then, of course, you could put an address. Let's try, I think, in the, in the exercise, you have to geocode some shopping centers. Uh, and at least yesterday, if you check the official address of Mall of Tripla, which is now the grand big uh, shopping center in Pasila. So if you try to search for that address, then there's nothing. So it hasn't yet been added to OpenStreetMap and this geocoder isn't able to locate that address on the map. So then of course there might be sometimes kind of false positives. You might end up having some street name in Oulu and then the point ends up there. So always be a bit critical when you're just dumping some addresses to a geocoder and then getting a response, then always check check did everything go well and so forth. So then we can use some other nearby address when geocoding Tripla, for example. Mm, okay, um, so back in the lesson materials, maybe what to note indeed is to check the terms of service of the geocoding services. So here we are doing this with a kind of sample, small sample data, not making too many requests. But if you have a huge amount of data, then you need to need to be a bit more considerate on how to how to use the service. OK, but finally, let's get coding. I recommend everybody uses the CSC notebooks. We're trying to now make the binders work, but they might not yet work. So use this or your own computer. Uh, I have my instance here ready. And maybe now let me know if you are not seeing, for example, the lesson tree notebooks, so they should be under auto GIS notebooks, notebooks, lesson tree. And then we are starting with this geocoding in GeoPandas uh, notebook. <coughs> mm. Okay. 
All good? Yes? Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, we are using GeoPy through GeoPanda, so it's a bit kind of easy, easier syn syntax-wise to use it uh, using this uh, tool from GeoPandas. As input data, we have a text file which is located in the data folder. I hope you have it all. If you don't, let me know. So it's a text, regular text file. It's now a semicolon delimited. There's ID, ID uh, header and then address. Uh, and then we have some 35 rows, 34 rows of data. There's some ID, then there's some address uh, with postal code. All of these are from from Helsinki, Finland. So we'll be geocoding these these addresses, getting 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 coordinates for these uh, using GeoPandas and GeoPy. Uh, but of course, first we need to read in the data. Mm. <coughs> Uh, and here, as we are now still dealing with text files, so we are using uh, pandas. That's PD. So we'll need to import pandas at least. We'll be importing some other packages, but let's do that once we need them. Uh, and then we need a file path. You can now just write the whole file path in here. So data dash add addresses dot text that should be there uh, and then into a variable called data uh, pd read csv uh, file path and now as we had this the default csep separator is a comma so we can use this is it a colon or what was it called the correct separator to read in the data and then again always do a bit of checking so we have 34 rows of data and then first rows of data look like this So we have the ID from the original file, and then there is this pandas data frame index uh, that we can see on the left, starting from zero, the ADDR column, everything everything looks fine. You can, all, of course, check also while we wait that everybody is with us. So data.tail, that there's no empty rows, for example, at the end. Totta kai. Kiitos, kun sanat. Mm. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so we have now some input data and the point would be that as an output we would have a geodata frame with actual uh, coordinates as shapely objects and then we can even define the coordinate reference system and so on. Um, there we go. So we are then using, in GeoPandas, it's kind of this optional extension uh, tool, GeoCode. Mm, and we need to either, well, we could call it directly, but we can also import it. So it's a bit easier to refer to it. So from GeoPandas dot tools, tools, import GeoCode. Uh, that should get imported without a problem. I'll just quickly show. So from GeoPandas documentation, this is quite a short tutorial, but there's a basic example of how to use this GeoCode tool. But for anything more advanced, uh, such as these kind of GeoCoder specific attributes, then you need to refer to GeoPy documentation, which I showed earlier. So to this page, just to show you where to find more information. Um, so we have imported that tool. Where was I? Dim, dim, dim. There. Um, and then it's not more than to give the addresses. So a piece of text that is the address or the place name 
give it to the geocoder and then get the response. Um, so we want to store the output somewhere. So the output will be a geo data frame, so we can call it geo. Then we call the tool, so geocode. Um, the first parameter will be kind of the items to geocode, so the addresses in this case, and they are stored in the ADDR column. So we give a pandas series uh, as input. Then we specify provider, uh, which is nominatim. And then uh, with nominatim, it's now, I think it's not yet in this GeoPy version, but it will be compulsory to kind of provide a user agent. So nominatim doesn't, uh, sorry, typo, doesn't require an API key. So API stands for application programming interface. And then for example, Google geocoding API requires this API key. So we would have to go to their website, register, and then get some user specific codes that they know that I am using it and they would be tracking how much am I using their service and then maybe billing. But uh, in Nominatim, you need to spe specify a user agent, which is kind of the name of your application. So our application could be called, for example, AutoGIS. And then uh, I'll put my initials. You can put your initials. It doesn't really matter with this. Uh, little amount of data. I think, let me check. I had it in somewhere. Mm. Yep, sorry, I'll flip back to the lesson pages. So how Nominatim gives responses to these geocoding uh, queries is that they have a rate limit of one request per second, which would mean 3,600 requests per hour. So that's how many requests we can do. So we can then uh, geocode only so many addresses per hour. If we ask for more, then they will give us uh, an error that we're asking for too much data, and then we need to somehow deal with that. Mm. There we go. We could, you can try to run this. You might get a timeout error, which means that then uh, it takes too long time uh, to get the response, and then this uh, my IPython stops asking for the information, so it gives me now service not available. Let's, let's not yet worry too much. We can then start worrying if this, this, this doesn't work after a few fixes. So I'll add uh, a timeout parameter, and let's try, I don't know, four seconds. So we allow a bit more time for the response to come back, because, well, we have 30 rows, which is not like hugely much, but it's already something. Let's see what it gives me now. Not yet. Let's see if we get a major demo effect. I could even put it up to 10. Up to 10. So sometimes if you get some, you get stuck somewhere, it might be good to kind of shut down the session. So shut down the kernel and then run, run things again, and it might, might then reboot, reboot things. So I'll just run everything from the top. Um, let's do this. Uh, here's a bit more complicated way of doing the same thing, where uh, we have added kind of a rate rate limiter so we have added a bit of delay in between each request so this is kind of modified from the geopy documentation with hints on how to geocode addresses in a pandas data frame so what it does uh, it uses um, geopy <coughs> so we import the geocoder from geopy uh, define that put the user agent there uh, then there's this rate limiting uh, object, which then handles the geocoding. So it takes the uh, kind of geolocator, uh, geocoding functionalities, and then adds a bit of delay there. And then we apply this 
rate limited geocoder function to uh, the data series where the addresses are located uh, and then you kind of have to fetch the, there's this more complicated GeoPy location object from where uh, we then have to get the actual coordinates uh, and then then we can make shapely points out of those so you can also try to run uh, run that code okay mine went through now so you can also I put this time out 40 seconds so we allowed a bit more time for the service to respond to our uh, requests so you can maybe also do that let's do so that I'll demo the next steps there's not much more uh, might be that not everybody can follow live but then then hopefully everybody gets this this done so at least now we learned some tricks to uh, tricks how to how to e eventually get the response even though the service would be a bit slow and feel free to also you can copy paste all of this into a new code cell and try to run that also so it does the uh, uses the delay uh, in the requests in a bit bit more advanced way uh, so let's see what we actually have um, I'll put it in here I don't want to run that again. So you can add a cell geo.head. So what you should get out of there, uh, when we use this GeoPandas uh, GeoCode tool, it returns a GeoData frame uh, with two columns. So this is the address that has been, this is the address from the GeoCoder. So for example, if you look at row nine, there is Bangkok nine, and I doubt that that was in our input data. Uh, one, two, three. So there was only Kaivoka to eight. Um, but then the geocoder has learned, uh, uh, found some point of interest from that location and returned that. E so in that exact address, there seems to be a restaurant and so forth. And then we have this uh, geo series, so geometric column with the shapely points. Uh, but then as a final step, we might want to associate this uh, response with the original data. So we could do some quality control. Are the addresses correct? Are they all in Helsinki, for example? And so on. So we will finally do a table join. Uh, and you did this already kind of learning by doing in exercise six in GeoPython course. So we'll repeat a bit the basic, uh, basic principles of table joins before we then move on to spatial joins. Uh, so here we have the case that we have the original 30, was it 34 rows of data like this, and then we get a response of 34 rows of data. We can check that that matches, and then we can kind of just, based on the index, join those together. So based on the order of the columns, join those together, because there is no common key uh, in those two tables, as we saw that the addresses are not any more identical to the original ones. Maybe I'll demonstrate it down here um, put this away mm -mm. sorry for going up and down uh, so we have this geo data frame and let's still check how many rows of response we got uh, so 34 rows so we got a response for each row uh, in the original data uh, and still to confirm the original data uh, which is the pandas data frame we, we read in uh, has 34 rows and we know that each day the rows are in the same original order so in this case we can just join them together mm, using pandas join uh, and it does in this case well it does matter in which order we join join the tables but let's do it so that we call we join to the geocoded output uh, the data and then let's check um, hmm. Join 
head what that looks like. So this is something you might have done or there you might have used the merge merge command in pandas. So there is an excellent uh, documentation on the pandas web page about different ways of joining data. Mm. But in this case we have identical index so uh, geo jo geo join uh, joins the data based on the index. And here is the result. Uh, if we want to be kind of uh, very neat, we could reorder the columns. So I'll add a little cell here. I'll do join dot columns. Mm. The order doesn't really matter, but often it's kind of nice to have the geometry column at the end. Uh, so I'll do like this, join equals join, then mm, maybe let's do so. There we go. So I'm doing nothing more than getting the same columns from the uh, geodata frame but just in a different order replacing the original variable with that mm -hmm. we can check how it looks uh, and then even furthermore could check confirm that we have the correct correct number of, of rows. Uh, so this is the original address, then this is the geocoded response from Nominatim, and then the actual uh, coordinate point. Uh, one more thing to check is that does this layer have a CRS, so join.crs it does. So when we are doing the geocoding using GeoPandas tools geocode, so then uh, it is indeed a geodata frame which has a CRS definition and it is VGS84, EPSC4326. Uh, so everything seems fine. Mm. And we already mentioned this but didn't check. So the type is Type is geodata frame. Maybe one more uh, note about the join here. So if I would join uh, geo into, so if I would do like this, let's do it quickly, even though this is a bit slow. So if I would do data.join uh, geo, I kind of, I get the same columns in a bit different order. Then I order them again. Uh, looks the same, same number of rows. Uh, well, it doesn't have a CRS because it's a pandas data frame. So it depends a bit uh, what you want as the output, but here as we joined columns to the pandas data frame, we lose the geodata frame data type. In this case, it's more logical to do it like we did first. So. Geo dot, geo dot join uh, so join columns from data to geo based on uh, index. So in this case we have a, have a spatial layer that we can then for example store as a shape file as we did last time. Now it has the CRS, it's a geodata frame. And finally we can save save this layer for further use. So I'll define an output file path uh, string. So we have this folder called data. Uh, and call it addresses.shape. Mm, and then using now that it's a geodata frame we can use this to file output file path I need to 
restart this again. Let's see if it bugs us. At least I don't get any warning about the CRS. If we would be super careful, we would then define the CRS as a well-known text string, but we'll do that in the next tutorial. So now you should have, if everything went right and you got the geocoding response, we have a shape file with all the associated files in the data folder. So how many is there still who did eventually didn't get the response? Okay, so let's let's see that everybody everybody gets some kind of a file to continue with. <coughs> 